Good morning. I'm Dr. D. Malagiri, working as professor in the Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics, Shivalaji Dental College and Hospital Chennai. Today we'll be discussing about sterilization and disinfection in this video. So before going into the details, first let's see certain uh, definitions. So sterilization is defined as use of physical or chemical procedure to destroy all microorganisms, including substantial numbers of resistant bacterial spores. Here, you have to understand the difference between sterilization and disinfection. Sterilization eliminates all microorganisms, including the bacterial spores. What are these spores? They are resistant form of bacteria. They are dormant state. When the bacteria has a suitable environment, it becomes active and starts to multiply. So sterilization procedure destroys all microorganisms along with the spores. But disinfection, it destroys the microorganisms, but it is not effective against the spore forms of bacteria. So when do we call a surface or a material sterile? When it is free from all microorganisms, all living microorganisms, usually described as a probability. Next comes the term disinfection, where there is destruction of pathogenic and other kinds of microorganisms by physical or chemical means. It is less lethal than sterilization and it destroys the majority of recognized pathogenic microorganisms, but not necessarily on microbial forms. As I mentioned earlier, it doesn't have any effect on the spore form of bacteria. Disinfectant is a chemical agent used to destroy virtually all recognized pathogenic microorganisms, but not necessarily all the microbial forms, example, the endospores of bacteria. So what is our objective when it comes, uh, uh, when our aim is to bring about infection control? We need to protect the patient and members of the dental team from contacting infections during dental procedure. And here, during this time of pandemic, the protection of the patient as well as the operator becomes mandatory. So extra effort should be taken in order to be sure that infection control protocol is followed um, absolutely. To reduce the number of pathogenic microorganisms in the dental operatory to the lowest possible level, and to implement a high standard of infection control and treating every patient, that is, we follow universal precautions. To simplify infection control, thus allowing the dental team to complete treatment with minimal inconvenience. So all these remain the objectives for infection control. So before going into the procedure of sterilization and disinfection, first, Let's see how the instruments are classified. The Center for Disease Control, CDC, has defined instruments as critical, semi-critical, and non-critical, depending on the surface with which they come in contact. So critical instruments are instruments which are used to penetrate tissue or to touch bone. So it must be sterilized definitely. For example, scissors, forceps, elevator, and scalers all these come under the category of critical instruments. Semi-critical instruments, they touch the mucous membrane but do not penetrate the tissue or touch bone. And uh, all these instruments should be sterilized, definitely. If the instrument is susceptible to heat damage, then it can be subjected to high level of disinfection. Non-critical instruments are equipment and surfaces which contact only intact skin. See the spatula, rubber ball, or uh, goggles, all these come in contact with intact, intact skin. So they don't require sterilization procedures because they won't be able to withstand the temperature of sterilization. So you can decontaminate them using intermediate level disinfection. For example, spatula, mixing slab, and protective either. 
So first let's see what is disinfection. An ideal disinfectant must have the following properties. Broad spectrum of activity, that means it should be effective against wide number of bacteria and viruses. Only then you can uh, use a single material to get 100% uh, infection or 100% sterile environment. Should act rapidly so that the procedure is less uh, tiring, non corrosive, environment friendly, and it should be free of volatile organic compounds and it should be non toxic and stable. So, disinfectants are classified as high level, intermediate level, and low level. High level disinfection is the process that in, in, inactivates the vegetative bacteria, microbacteria, fungi, and viruses but not necessarily high numbers of bacterial spores. So whatever is the type of disinfection procedure, it does not eradicate the spores. That you have to understand. Intermediate level disinfection, it inactivates vegetative bacteria, fungi, microbacteria, and majority of viruses, but not the bacterial spores. Low level disinfectant, they are um, liquid chemical germicide registered with EPA as a hospital disinfectant. So commonly used uh, disinfectants are chlorine dioxide, sodium hypochlorite, iodophores, squatinary ammonium compounds. So chlorine dioxide it is used for disinfecting the operatory surfaces and it takes about 1 to 3 minutes. Whereas hypochlorite disinfects in 3 to 30 minutes and it is used in a concentration of 1 is to 1 or 1 is to 5. Hydrophores are broad spectrum dis disinfectant. Biocide activity occurs within 30 minutes. The most effective dilution for hard surface hydrophores is 1 is to 213 parts of soft or distilled water. And it is built in color indicator. Quaternary ammonium compounds are a group of compounds including benzyl benzalkonium chloride. But this is no longer recommended for instrument work surface disinfection. All these quaternary ammonium compounds are disapproved by the ADA for use in dentistry. So, disinfection procedure has a lot of steps. So, first step should be because scrubbing, that is, after you use the instrument on the patient, you can't disinfect the uh, equipment directly with the solution. So, first you need to wash it, clean it, so that residual saliva or whatever residue. The air on the instrument surface to be removed completely. So first step it was because scrubbing of the surfaces to be disinfected and wiping them clean. The second step it was wetting the surface with the disinfectant and leaving it wet for the time prescribed by the manufacturer. Next comes sterilization. So this is again done in four steps. The first step is pre-cleaning disinfection using holding solution. That is after the instrument or uh, the surface has been cleaned, thoroughly cleaned of the residue, then holding solution is used for pre-cleaning disinfection. Then comes pre-sterilization cleaning where the holding solution is removed completely and then it is subjected to sterilization procedure and finally it is stored aseptically. You need uh, for, for sterilization, you need certain uh, elements like high quality sterilization equipment and maintenance, correct operation of equipment, comprehensive operator training and weekly use of biologic indicators to monitor effective sterilization. If any one of these is not, uh, is not effective, is not working, then the entire procedure will not be effective. Next, let's see what are the instruments in the conservative dentistry and endodontics, the, how they are sterilized. So first, the soil instruments like burrs and files, they are soaked in holding solution. Even the hand instruments, you need to wash it and store soak in holding solution for some time. Clean the gloss deposits of materials or tissues with gloss soaked in holding solution. This holding solution, what does it do? It prevents tissues, fluids, and debris from drying, and it reduces the amount of viable microorganisms during cleaning. 
then scrub the brush under running water so that you remove the solution completely. Wash, washing instruments and hands becomes mandatory and in this uh, situation of COVID, you have to be really careful when you handle soil instruments. Another way to clean the instruments is by use of ultrasonic cleaners where you can keep the instruments in the ultrasonic cleaner for 5 to 10 minutes. This reduces chances of hand injury, reduces splatter and also more effective cleaning can be achieved. Then rinse the disinfectants from the instruments well before packaging. Residue of disinfectant, it can cause rusting or corrosion. So instruments must be cleaned and dried well. It should not be wet. It should be dried well before sterilization to prevent corrosion. So hand pieces can be sterilized in the following manner. First, brush the hand piece. After you rinse it on the patient, brush the hand piece into the container for 30 seconds. Then lubricate it with oil, oil spray. Then rearrange the hand piece and spray excess oil out by air only. Close the water knob and then remove the excess oil. Then wipe it clean, place it in a sterilization pouch and then you can subject it to sterilization cycle. Salt and bead sterilization uh, in this temperature of 450 degree Fahrenheit for 5 to 10 seconds is used. Instruments are held in salt or beads at least one fourth of an inch below the surface. So either salt or beads can be used. So this is uh, mainly used for sterilization of files, reamers roaches, all these can be sterilized by this method. So thermometer monitors the temperature. Here, sodium chloride, magnesium carbonate, sodium uh, carbonate, sodium silico eliminate 1% can be used for this salt sterilization. But the salt should be changed weekly. And uh, the difference between salt and bead sterilizer is higher temperatures reached with the salt. So granules, because the granules are smaller, beads, glass beads will be used which are much bigger than the salt. So it takes some time for getting heated up. Another thing is sometimes this bead can be stuck to the instruments like uh, files or ramers and when we insert it into the root canal, it might be carried into the root canal and may stay there as a foreign body resulting in failure. So. This is the disadvantage of bead sterilization and also it has low sterilization efficiency. I said temperature is not that high in bead sterilizer. So these are the sterilization pouches that are commonly used. Here uh, in this you can see that there is color indicator which will, in, which, which will change color uh, after the sterilization cycle. It shows that the proper cycle has been completed. This is the chemical indicator which changes color. Methods of sterilization it can be classified as steam pressure sterilization or autoclave, chemical vapor pressure sterilization, which is otherwise called as chemiclave, dry heat sterilization or dry clave, and ethylene oxide sterilization. So, first let's see autoclaving, otherwise called steam pressure sterilization. For light load of instruments, the time required is about 121 degrees centigrade and it requires about 15 minutes minimum at 15 pounds of pressure. So if this is light load, if the, temp, uh, if the time for wrapped instruments uh, can be reduced to 7 minutes, then the temperature should be raised to approximately 134 degrees centigrade to give 30 pounds of pressure. So if you want to reduce the time, you have to increase the temperature and the pressure. So what happens is the latent heat because of the steam that is produced when it condenses on the spore on the surface of the bacteria, what happens is this latent heat is released onto the surface of the bacteria and that destroys the uh, bacterial uh, proteins and causes uh, protein coagulation and also DNA, RNA breakdown and hence the bacteria or microorganism dies off completely. So steam must enter and circulate around the packs easily. Instrument fans or other permeable insoles, instrument containers must be left open so that steam can enter.
So the principle behind this autoclaving is moiety, the application of moiety, which gives the microorganisms to protein coagulation, uh, nucleic acid breakdown, and release of low molecular weight intracellular components. Advantages it's the most rapid and effective method. It is dependable and economical, and it is verifiable. Verifiable, why I'm saying verifiable, you can use biological indicator or chemical indicator to make sure that the sterilization cycle is complete. Limitations with this method is items sensitive to the elevated temperature cannot be autoclaved, and it can cause rusting of carbon steel instruments and birds. Instruments must be air dried at completion of this cycle. Again, otherwise, it will cause rusting. So sterilization birds and autophase, when you are going to sterilize birds in autophase, you can keep the birds in a beaker or a container containing above 2% of sodium nitride solution. So after ultrasonic cleaning, birds can be rinsed, placed in a glass beaker or metal beaker with a perforated net, place the container and uh, uh, with the birds and go into the sterilizer and you can proceed with the normal sterilization cycle. Then the fluid should be discarded after the cycle is over. Then you can use sterile forceps to place the birds into the bird holder or tray. Any nitrate residue can be wiped away or rinsed off with clean or sterile water if desired. So next method is called as chemiclaving. This is the same as the pressure uh, autoclaving except that you use chemical instead of plain water, okay? So in 1938, Dr. George Hollenbach and the uh, uh, work of Hollenbach Harvey in 1940s culminated in the development of the unsaturated chemical vapor system, also called as Harvey's chemical. This kills the microorganisms by destroying vital proteins. The chemical vapor pressure sterilizers operate at 131 degrees centigrade and 20 ground pounds of pressure for about 30 minutes. This temperature of pressure and uh, minutes, so that you should be very clear with each method. Newer models appear to handle aldehyde vapors also. Unsaturated chemical vapor sterilization involves heating a chemical solution of primarily alcohol with 0.23% formaldehyde in a closed pressurized chamber. Advantages is carbon steel and other corrosion sensitive birds, instruments, and flyers can be sterilized by this method. It is relatively quick and long, comes out dry, unlike autoclaving. Sterilization is verifiable even in this situation. Limitations are that the items sensitive to elevated temperature can be damaged and the vapor odor is very offensive. It smells bad. Heavy cloth wrappings of surgical instruments may not be penetrated to provide sterilization. Next method is called as dry heat or conventional dry heat ovens. This is uh, done at a temperature of about 160 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. The instrument launch may take 30 to 90 minutes to reach that temperature. So to provide a margin of safety, instruments must be sterilized at 160 degrees centigrade for 2 hours. So, a little time consuming procedure. They have heated chambers. So, what happens is there will be a cooling fan. So, when the air gets heated up, it rises, right? So, the fan, when it rotates, it dissipates the hot air along all the surfaces of the instruments. That, uh, and hence, it destroys the microorganisms by dry heat. It allows the air to circulate by gravity flow. Packs of instruments must be placed at least one centimeter apart to allow heated air to circulate. Kills the microorganisms primarily by oxidation process and protein coagulation can also occur. Uh, if, when you're going to place amalgam uh, uh, condensers or carriers, uh, if a residual amalgam is sticking to the instrument, what will happen? Mercury vapor will be released and it is hazardous to the person whoever is doing the procedure. Next is ethylene oxide sterilization. This was first used in 1940s by US Army. This is the best method for sterilizing complex instruments 
when delicate materials because of extreme penetrability of the ETO molecule and low temperature that is about 70 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit. It kills the microorganisms by reacting chemically with nucleic acid. So it causes alkylation of the hydroxyl group. This requires several hours and it seems ideal for anti sterilization. Porous and plastic materials absorb the gas and require aeration for 24 hours or more before you can use it on patient. Advantages of this method is it operates effectively at low temperature. Gas is extremely penetrative. It can be used for sensitive equipment because it doesn't cause corrosion or uh, any other uh, problem. Sterilization is verifiable again in this case. Disadvantages is, is that it is potentially mutagenic and carcinogenic that you have to keep in mind. So it requires aeration chamber and cycle time lasts for hours. It takes it's a time consuming procedure then. And it is usually only hospital based. So now after seeing the various methods of sterilization, let's see how each uh, individual material and equipment are sterilized. Uh, cut apart, it is sterilized by dipping in sodium hypochlorite solution. If it is 1% concentration, you have to soak it for 5 minutes. If it is 5.25%, 1 minute will be sufficient. Sterilization of operative industry instruments, angle attachments, stainless steel instruments can be autoclaved, dry clave, hemiclave, or any disinfectant can be used. Carbon steel instruments, you can use autoclave, chemiclave, or dry clave. Handpiece, autoclave, chemiclave, or ethylene oxide can be used. Uh, mirrors, mouth mirrors, again, can be sterilized by any method. For glassware, usually chemical disinfectants are preferred. Burrs, carbon steel, you have to dry clave or chemiclave. Uh, or if it is uh, autoclave, you have to keep it in a sodium nitride solution. Operatory clinic. Uh, sterilized using UV rays and formaldehyde gas. Uh, uh, that provides a clean, sterile environment. Blankets, towels, and aprons, they should be exposed to formalin followed by autoclave. The air syringe tip can be autoclave, chemiclave, or dry clave, or any chemical disinfectant can be used. Extra equipment, uh, usually it should be autoclave. The, Porter and uh, clips, all that should be out of it. Plastic film folder can be disinfected with chemical disinfectant or chemical. Rubber dam, if it is disposable, you are going to dispose it off. Otherwise, um, uh, the rubber dam uh, frame and uh, uh, rubber dam uh, retainer, all that you can sterilize using out of it, dry clay, chemical, or disinfectant. Cotton, dry clay is preferred. And for condensers and surgical instruments, autoclave, chemiclave, ethylene oxide, or dry clave can be used. It comes endodontic instruments, files, lemurs, and brooches. I already mentioned salt or bead sterilization can be used or autoclave. If the manufacturer claims that it can be autoclave, we can proceed with it. GP cones, sodium hypochlorite. Hydrogen peroxide or activated dihalbenide, GP points, dry clave, and chemical disinfectants. Intracanal instruments like rubbers, piezolemas, all that it can be dry clave. Absorbent points, cotton pellets, you can use, uh, use dry clave or uh, salt and bead sterilization. Cotton pliers and long handled instruments are dipped in alcohol and flaming can be done. Scissors, hand instruments, sharp edged instruments, cotton wool can be dry clay. Rubber dam frames, working surfaces, trays, you can use chemical disinfectants. Gates, grid entrails, autoclave can be done. For silver cones, silver cones are uh, obturating materials which have been used earlier but now it is not preferred because of its disadvantages. Now we use either gutta percha or SLR, all these are used as. Obturation materials. So when uh, silver cones were used, it, it was sterilized using flaming or hot salt sterilization. Glass slab and cement spatula, you can uh, use 
use a swab with tincture of timorasol followed by alcohol. So these are the various methods to uh, get a sterile environment and to ensure that the equipment and the operatory is 100% safe and that too now in a situation where uh, we are uh, uh, afraid of uh, cross infection while treating a patient we have to be careful uh, so that we don't transfer the infection to the patient as well as uh, there is no transmission to the operating 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 team the dental team who are operating on the patient thank you